Good morning. Welcome to Fort Laramie Country Church. It is great to have you here this morning. I'm really excited about the message actually today. It, it really has hit home over the next last few weeks. Before we get started, let's start with a word of prayer. Fathers, we look into your word right now. We're just going to ask again that it just come alive that you reveal things to us that we've never seen before. We're going to ask you use it in our lives to mold us and shape us. Father, as we go out into the world that we reflect you, Father, be glorified through this. May we not do anything today or say anything today that would dishonor you or steal the glory from you in any way. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You know... We all have scars. We do. Uh, maybe as a young man or a young woman growing up, you got stitches of some kind. I know I got my share, and, and maybe it was some kind of surgery that left a scar. But most of our scars aren't physical. Most of them are actually emotional. And, and it seems like we all have them uh, from something in our past. And... Uh, but they're still scars. Uh, in fact, Nancy and I have learned being in the ministry, it's not the good stuff and the easy stuff that we went through that God uses the most. It seems like God's used the most in our lives are the things that left scars, emotional scars that just that are there. In fact, God used those scars more than anything else in the ministry sometimes. And we're going to be talking about that and how important that is. Uh, so we're going to see how God can use our scars from the past. Uh, physical, but mainly emotional. We're going to be looking in John chapter 20. And uh, starting in verse 24. Now Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. This is after his resurrection. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my fingers where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I won't believe it. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came in and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach, in, reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. And Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Thomas had scars of his own and pain from his past. If you look at John chapter 11, 16, Jesus was going to go back and raise Lazarus from the dead. But before he did that, he came, came through some dangerous country and they wanted to stone him. And, and his disciples were kind of concerned to go back. They were concerned for their safety. And this is what Thomas said. Verse of John eleven sixteen. Then Thomas said, call then Thomas, called Didymus, said to the rest of the disciples, Let us also go that we may die with him. See, that's fear. And, and whatever the scars were from Thomas's past brought fear. He also had doubt. If, if you look at John 14, 5, Jesus was getting ready to, to leave his disciples and, and he was kind of preparing them. And Thomas had a question. He said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. So how can we know the way and how to get there. He doubted. He, he felt he struggled with a lot of fear. He struggled with a lot of doubt. In fact, in verse 27, he said, Jesus said to Thomas, put your finger here, see my hand, reach out your hand, put your hand in my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas, Thomas had scars. Thomas lived with those scars and, and they brought fear and doubt. And uh, that's actually where we get the term today, doubting Thomas. That's who he's talking about. But look at how Jesus dealt with Thomas. Put your finger here. See and feel my scars. See, Jesus let Thomas get close enough to him to touch him. You know, you ever think about that? Do we let people get close enough? Do, do, or do we keep people at arm's length? Are we afraid people are going to see who we are? are? Are we afraid people are going to see our scars? 
And if we do, we have a tendency to, to put up walls and hide behind those scars. You know, because scars are tender. And I can remember when our kids were growing up, they had hurt themselves, they had skin and knee, and, and, uh, and, and you'd reach down and, and they'd want some sympathy, and you'd go, go to touch it, and they'd go, no, ouch, 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 ouch. And mainly because scars are tender. Scars are hard to let, let you touch and, 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 uh, because they're sensitive. And it can be a painful thing to have somebody touch, even an open wound. I can remember hunting in Montana and I'd killed a bull elk early one morning and, and uh, I went to grab him and he didn't think he was dead yet. And long story short, uh, I ended up cutting my finger with my knife and all the deep, all the way to the bone across the side here. And, and, uh, and it was late in the afternoon before I got home with the elk and back and Nancy said, you know, we need to go in and get that looked at and sure enough uh, we went there and the doctor said you're gonna have to have stitches but I got to clean it out first and I'm gonna tell you what there wasn't anything more painful it felt like he was using steel wool to clean that that wound out but that's how sensitive our scars can be sometimes uh, and, and so when we talk about opening ourselves up and letting people see and touch those scars that's not an easy thing to do you are opening yourself up for pain you are re revisiting a painful place uh, this was I'm sure not as easy for Jesus as we think you know those scars represented him being laughed at being spit upon uh, man being whipped be a crown of thorns being being hung on the cross the scars in his hand and the spear is a sign you know but we have to be real careful because one thing that can happen to these scars uh, they can callous over they can they can uh, they can cause us become hard um, I can remember when I was before I was in the ministry uh, most of what I did was physical construction and ranching and and I'd get calluses I'd get calluses to the point you know they were they were all across the hands and fingers and and they'd actually pop up sometimes you'd peel them off they'd get so hard uh, but but it made my hands, they weren't, my hands weren't very sensitive. Those callous, those scars can make us so we're not real sensitive. In fact, I can remember even hugging Nancy at time and I could feel her kind of cringe because as I grabbed her, my hands were so rough. I remember walking one time, we were going into a place and she had one of those real soft kind of silky blouses on and I put my hand in the swell of her back and it was catching, uh, catching her, the material. And, and then I realized, you know, my hands just aren't soft, you know. Uh, Ben, they just weren't sensitive, and that can happen. Our scars can make us uh, hard and insensitive. And so we close people out. We start to push people away. And instead of helping people, we, we actually can get real judgmental and critical. We become angry and bitter when we allow those scars to get hard. Um, in 1 Peter 4.11, it says it this way. If anyone speaks, he should do it as one speaking the very words of God. If anyone serves, he should do it with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. See, Thomas could relate through Jesus' scars. Thomas connected with those scars. You know, our wounds or scars are how people connect with us. Uh, the support that I, an encouragement that Nancy and I have gotten through this heart attack has been amazing, over the top. I mean, it's, it's really been unbelievable almost. But I'm going to tell you, the people that have ministered the most to me personally were the people that have had heart attacks. There's a guy in town by the name of Will. He's had a heart attack. He understood. And I was able to talk to him. And as we shared and talked, he shared stuff. I go, yeah, that's right. I understand. And as I shared stuff, he understood. We connected. He related because of the pain uh, that we'd both gone through. It was, a, it was a great connection. I could relate with everything Will was saying. You know, and I had another pastor call me that had a heart attack. He said, yeah, hey, I had a heart attack. And as he shared, I could connect. I could feel his pain. We connected. There was a bond because of that. I know when Nancy and I uh, lost Nicole, the people that reached out and ministered to us the most had people that had lost children. 
people that were willing to share that pain and scars and and we could connect and we could relate with that pain and 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 they were saying I've been there I know your pain I understand and our hearts went out to them and their hearts went out to us see my hands Jesus said look at the scars and the wounds this is letting people get close enough to see real we're not trying to hide our scars this is where we show people if we try to hide those scars we show people an optical illusion we really do we're not showing people who we really are if we try to hide behind those scars or 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 not allow people to get close to not close enough we are saying, hey, we have it all together. Uh, we have the perfect life. We start to look like the cover girl with no flaws. The danger is that people can't relate to that. Nobody has the perfect life. Nobody can relate with somebody who looks like a cover girl on a magazine or has a perfect life because we all have scars from the past. We all have pain uh, from the past and maybe stuff you're dealing with now. In fact, uh, Casting Crowns wrote a song that virtually addressed that very issue and it's called Stained Glass Masquerade. Let me read you the words for this song. It's amazing. Is there anyone that fails? Is there anyone that falls? Am I the only one in church today feeling so small? Because when I take a look around, everyone seems so strong. I know that they'll soon discover that I don't belong. So I tuck it all away like everything's okay. If I make them all believe it, maybe I'll believe it too. So with a painted grin, I'll play the part again. So everyone will see me the way that I see them. Are we happy plastic people under shiny plastic steeples with walls around our weakness and smiles to hide our pain? But the invitation is open to every heart that's broken. Maybe then we'll close the curtain on our stained glass masquerade. They nailed it. They nailed it. When we hide our scars, we're hiding the very thing God wants to use most in our lives. In fact, 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 5 in the Living Bible says it this way. What a wonderful God we have. He is the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of every mercy, and the one who so wonderfully comforts and strengthens us in our hardships and trials. Then why does He do this? So that when others are in trouble, need of our sympathy and encouragement, we can pass on to them the same help and same comfort God passes on to us. You can be sure that the more you undergo suffering for Christ, the more He will shower us with His comfort and encouragement. He said, He will help us in our troubles so that we will be able to help others who have all kinds of troubles. Every scar we have tells a story. Have you ever had somebody show you a scar and tell a story? Our grandkids are great at it. Man, they get a scar, a little cut, and they got a band-aid, and they want to come and show it to you, and they want to show, tell you how they got it, what happened. When I was on Elk Mountain Ranch managing it, I took a, a, an elk hunter out, a cow hunter out, and uh, he was from Michigan, and so I got to know him, and, and we talked. He'd been shot in a hunting accident. Somebody had actually shot him, and he wanted to share that story. He wanted to show me the scar because it, because it told a story. You know, and when, as we share these scars, and we have trusted God, it shows God's power in our life. If you've trusted God through the loss of a loved one, God has prepared you to help somebody else who's lost a loved one. If you've trusted God through cancer, He's prepared you to help somebody else who's gone and is going through cancer. If you've trusted God with the loss of a job, He's prepared you to help somebody that's going through the loss of a job. Whatever that scar is, God can use it to His glory. So that when others are troubled, needing our sympathy and encouragement, we can pass on to them the same help and comfort God has passed on to us. God wants, God wants to let us use our scars so that He can share His story through us. 
when Jesus showed Thomas's scar, it was a window into Jesus' heart, how much he loved him. He was willing to die for him. Our scars are a window into our heart, and that's where Jesus lives. That's where people will see the love of Jesus Christ. That's where people will see how real Jesus is. That is where people will see the difference Jesus Christ makes in our lives. A number of years ago, uh, promise keepers was a big deal. Women of faith was a big deal. And, and thousands upon thousands would go to these Promise Keepers event. We went to one a number of years ago, and it was probably 50,000 guys there. And, and what it was is, is Promise Keepers were, were real people would show real scars and share the difference Jesus Christ made. People ate it up. Men ate it up. These were real men sharing real scars, showing a real Jesus. Look what happened to Thomas, verse 28. And Thomas answered him, My Lord, my God. When Thomas touched Jesus' scars, he said, You are real. Friends, when we get real with people, when we allow people to see our pain and how God has comforted us through it and walked us through it, He gets the glory and it ministers to other people in a mighty way. People will see that Jesus is real in your life. But maybe you're listening to this today and you've never experienced the reality of Jesus Christ. That comes by putting your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. That comes by realizing you're a sinner and need a Savior, and that's why Jesus died on the cross. That's why He has those scars. He died because He loves you, and He wants you to put your faith and trust in Him. And when you do that, every sin you have ever done will be forgiven, and it guarantees you a place in heaven. You can do that right now, right where you are. Say, Lord, I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. I'm going to ask Jesus to come into my heart right now and cover every sin I've ever done. It's that simple. You just need to ask. After this, there will be a phone number, a web page. A uh, Facebook page has our number. If you have any questions or would like to talk about that, Nora, please call. I would love to visit more about that with you. Let's pray. Father, help us be real people in a real world. Help us, help us to embrace people instead of push them away. That they can see your love and the reality of who you are. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.